Welcome to another episode of Inquiring Minds. I'm Steve Harper, and with me as always is my amazing co-host, Donna Carlin. Donna, how are you today? I'm great, thank you. I'm looking forward to this conversation uh, like you have no idea, because I think it's not only relevant, <laughs> but I think it's um, critical for a lot of people out there. So I look forward to hearing your three cents on that. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it as well. So what are we talking about? So this is a topic that I, I found online by the off chance kind of thing, because I spend a, about a half an hour every day, I would say, on LinkedIn to see what wisdom is out there. And there is a lot of wisdom out there. And this yes. was one of the things I came across. So I want to throw it out there, have a conversation and hear what our readers have to say afterwards. So it doesn't matter if they're family. It doesn't matter if that's the only job you could find. It doesn't matter if you're scared of the unknown. It doesn't matter if you've known them for years. Toxic is toxic and you must fight unapologetically to defend your health and happiness. How powerful a statement is that? It's very, very powerful. And it ticks all the boxes for every area that toxic toxicity could actually creep into. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm curious what, uh, what was the, about this particular uh, statement that really caught your attention and, and uh, you know, what, what, uh, what brings it to the forefront for you? I'm at the stage of my life where I excuse the expression, don't take any crap from anybody. And, um, it's, it's a great place to be. I yeah. sort of learned from my mother. She's, she's like a, a, a pro at this, at this point in her life. And, um, what really stands out for me is why do we take that kind of garbage? Yeah. Uh, it we do not deserve to be treated inappropriately. So it doesn't matter if it's a family member. It doesn't matter if it's your boss. There are ways of dealing with this kind of toxicity. It becomes toxic when you do nothing about it. If it's a one-off and you stay silent, it's not going to be a one-off. It's giving them permission to continue treating you with such pro profound disrespect that it becomes toxic. Yeah. And I know that I feel in my body when I'm in a, a toxic conversation or somebody's treating me like a piece of garbage because they think they're entitled to, the, my whole body tenses up and I know that's my my cue to turn around and say stop yep not acceptable a good part of the time it's because those individuals say it's family members are holding you responsible for what they're ticked off about in their life yeah. for some way, way shape or form well they're adults grow up deal with it <laughs> I'm not going to bear that responsibility for what you're unhappy with I'm not and when you you turn around and you say you don't say, you know, stop treating me like crap. Cause I guess, you know, where, you know, you think I'm treating you like crap now and it goes on. <laughs> Yo, uh, let me show you how much more I can do. Uh, Have you been in my family you know, lately? I'm just curious. Uh, no, I love your father. Don't go there. <laughs> I don't know the rest of your family, but yeah. I do love your father. Um, you know, I, I look at it from a perspective of what is the question I could ask them that throws it right back on them. So that's like tung fu slash take the bully by the horns kind of conversation. Yeah. It's saying, excuse me for a moment. Do you want to hold me responsible for your happiness? Are you also going to hold me responsible for everything great that's happened in your life? So you, you can't take credit for anything yeah. and you can't take blame for anything. What goes one way goes the other way. Yeah. You're going to do both. And then they, they shut up so quickly because they don't want me to, to actually be responsible for all their, their wins. <laughs> but you can take all their losses. That's, they have no that's, problem. That's exactly right. You know, it's, it's, I'm not going to be responsible for your happiness. I'm not going to be responsible for your success. So don't treat me like crap and don't lambaste me in front of others and make me like this big because it makes you feel bigger. I'm not going to accept it. And I'm not going to accept it in a way that they don't know what hit them. Yeah. Thank you heavens for you know tongue fu and, and take the bully by the horns <laughs> learning those skills has taught me how to minimize toxicity it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt or it doesn't impact you in some way shape or form but you feel really good about yourself when you learn how to deal with it absolutely and i'm seeing more of it i'm seeing people minimizing others 
because they want to deflect from themselves because they did something wrong and in just one basting somebody else they're they're deflecting the attention onto somebody else or you and if you accept it it'll keep coming have you seen more of that in in your world of late yeah i have you know i think that there is uh there is a level of toxicity in almost every environment now which is unfortunate and especially if you <laughs> if you spend any time online you will get your fair share uh you know in 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 droves right I, the interesting thing I think for me about this is, well, two things. First, Tung Fu, as a uh, commercial for one of our earliest episodes for our audience, be sure to go back and watch that episode on Tung Fu. It's incredibly empowering and enlightening and gives you an alternative perspective on how to leverage language to, exactly like Donna's saying, have the opportunity to steer these conversations a different way. And so I think, I, I think that episode a, is a, is a must watch or a must listen to for our audience. So um, the, I guess the second point I would make is uh, one of the things that I have personally experienced is I no longer have a tolerance for the toxicity. I have a situation in my own family, as you know, where we have a, a dispute over my father's care and, and ultimately how some decisions are being made. And it consumed so much of my time and my mental energy and it, it, it impacted my health. And it really is a situation where there are certain things that you can control and certain things you cannot. And ultimately in those toxic environments, you have to ask yourself, is this something I I can look towards to fix kind of like what you're proposing. Wait, hold on, hold on a sec. Let me do this. You know, let's have this question. Just like you said, if you're going to blame me for everything, do I get, you know, credit for all the, all the good stuff in your life? And you have to determine, is this a solvable or fixable situation? And then if not, uh, how much more BS are you willing to put up with in before you walk away or you just put up the blinders to it and just no longer, um, you know, allow yourself into those environments. I think that is pretty critical because I, I probably spent way too much time, um, throughout my life, not just with this particular situation, trying to justify or battle or argue towards trying to, you know, justify my position or my approach and when you're in that toxic environment, you often really struggle to, you can't win. You know, I always tell, you know, uh, people, you, you can't argue with stupid, right? <laughs> At some point, you just have to walk away. And the, the more you do, the better off mentally that you are going to be when you can finally say enough. I love the fact that, you know, if you see there's a potential to solve it, maybe this person doesn't know they're being toxic. Maybe there is uh, an opportunity to have a, a, a productive conversation about changing attitudes and behavior. Uh, great. Uh, what I've found, unfortunately, for a lot of the people that I would put in the toxic bucket, uh, they don't have any interest in changing. They, uh, they love making uh, other people miserable because they are so miserable themselves. And your choice really at that point is, you know, do I want to continue to expose myself around that, um, which just only works against you? Or do I separate and, and move, you know, well beyond it? And my maturity, I think for the older I get, the more I just don't have any tolerance for any of that drama because it affects every aspect of your life, you know, and you know, I've talked about this offline, these things, impact your relationships, they impact your work, they have this really, uh, the stink of the situation has a tendency to rub off on you in some respects, and you don't want that to carry forward and have that affect any other environments that you might, um, you know, be involved in, even though it might not be intended, and even though it might not be a consequence that you've thought through, it almost always has some hangover, and that is an area that I've gotten very finely tuned towards making sure that I just don't let that drip into any other areas of my life. You know, we can have another conversation another time, maybe next week on, you know, what to do about mental health well-being. Um, you know, what was fascinating for me, I remember Tom Leonard saying, sorry, George, George Leonard yep. saying that you have these negative people who are so negative and could suck the energy out of a room 
<laughs> Why? Because they've had years of practice. Think about that for a moment. I mean, you learned skill sets by practicing. Doesn't mean those skill sets are all good, they're all healthy, and they're all engaging and making you like people more. On the contrary, you know, you know, those people who walk into a, a party that's, you know, everybody's happy and laughing and joking. And this person comes in and finds something negative about everything that somebody's saying. And you just slowly but surely feel the energy get sucked out of the room. That's because they've had years of practice. And the yeah. only way to stop that cycle is to change how you deal with it differently. How often are these people confronted with their own negativity? Not, that's not to say, you know, you're toxic and get out of my life. That's to say, if you want this, I'm not engaging. And it's to say that if you want to bring me down and that's, that's your intention, and most of the time it isn't. It's just a byproduct of their way of being. However, if their intention is to bring you down, then thank you. Have a wonderful life. It won't be a part of mine. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if it's family. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to make choices based on what will help you thrive and show me in what way these situations, whether work, home, your fears, anything else will help you thrive. Yeah. They won't. So what could you do differently? How do you look a person in the eye and say, could you repeat what you said? Because how I received that, Can I can't imagine correct. you intended <laughs> to say something like that yeah. and and when they have to repeat it on purpose they often take a moment to reflect if they do repeat it on purpose that's an indicator that they intended to and are continuing to do it even though they know what the effect on you was yeah if you're a boss i could guarantee you the moment that that person could find another job or, or work under another leader they're gone Mm -hmm. And this is going to be costly for you and your reputation. If you, if you want your organization to succeed, you want to succeed. It is not by demolishing people under you. Yeah. That, that's the bottom line. Because people take jobs because of people. They leave jobs because of people. And if it's family stuff and you start getting into a tug of war in family, it follows you everywhere. And it permeates ripple effect to your yeah. kids, your, your spouses, your friends, because that's going to be the topic of conversation everywhere now ripple effect mr ripple king of ripple look at this you're really angry at your family you have steam coming out of your ears you're going to have dinner with you know your wife and another couple and what starts coming out of your mouth is how aggravated you are about your family or about something that just occurred around your father's care whatever it is and the tension starts increasing in their bodies even though they're there to support you there is a ripple effect oh, in that. yeah Absolutely. The next time you're about to, to go out for dinner with them, they might hesitate yeah. because they don't want to be dumped upon when they have their family dumping on them. Yeah. Why do I need his drama when I've got my own? Exactly. Right? <laughs> so look at the ripple effect, positive and negative, that, that you could bring to the world and how to sever the toxicity that exists in your life. Yeah. It's, it's really a fascinating conversation to have with yourself. It is. And, you know, the thing I love about what this you know topic is all about is you have a choice and you've you are the one that decides how much you're going to tolerate, and how much you're going to put up with and then what your next action needs to be. Right. You know, when I think about having that conversation, asking them to repeat what they just said, because clearly I, I can't understand or, or I'm, surely I'm getting that wrong. What you just <laughs> what you just said. Um, makes them, you know, really have to double down on what they just said and uh, come across as a bigger you know, horses behind than they did the first time. But there, there's something really relevant about that, whether it's in your work environment, whether it's with a coworker, whether it's with a family member or a friend. Sometimes people that are allowed to get away with it, not sometimes, almost all the time, people that have been allowed to get away with this level of behavior do it without engaging their brain. And they don't realize just how far they push it or how, uh, how, how they are coming across. And when you force that conversation by putting that back on the table to have the discussion, if, if that relationship is salvageable or worth the investment, 
it is amazing how you can uh, kind of shake them potentially out of that if they happen to be that um, toxic and that aggressive it may not have the impact that you're looking for. And that also tells you something like, hey, I tried, I gave it my best effort, but I'm moving on. But there's kind of something funny about it because when you, um, when you call a bully uh, a bully and you stand up for yourself and your situation and I'm not gonna be spoken to that way, I'm not gonna allow someone like yourself to, to talk to me in that manner. We have to come to some sort of understanding to get past this and you know find a, a more, uh, you know, cohesive way to communicate or some common ground, uh, or I'm out of here, right? To your point, um, I think that that has a tendency to standing up to the bully, which takes away all their power. Because I think those that are so toxic, they love to spread it when they can. Because yeah. if their life is miserable, they think everybody's life needs to be miserable. And sometimes when you call them, you know, call a spade a spade and you say, you know, nope, not going to play. You know, this is not a game that I'm willing to do. Um, and, you know, take that power away. But then you also come back and say, look, this relationship is important to me. I feel like it's getting off track. I feel like when I spend time with you or we go down this particular road of topic or subject, uh, it always turns to the really, you know, negative nature, really toxic. It doesn't feel good for me and I can't put up with it. Is that what your intention is? Because I can't see you knowing who you are as an individual, you wanting to do that. All of a sudden you just like pop their balloon, right? You know, the right people sometimes need that virtual slap in the face to kind of wake yeah. up and realize, oh, wow, you know, I was going down this path or I was. And you see it a lot of times. Some of that toxicity is driven by their environment, driven by old bad habits. They they sometimes just put it on autopilot and it happens. The people that are really not committed to ruining everybody's lives will wake up. You kind of shake them into that, which is a great conversation to have. The people who aren't won't care. <laughs> You're going to know pretty quickly where where you stand. And it, and it generally, there's not a lot of middle ground, right? I, I have found relationships in, in my life, and I've, I've worked with a coach uh, coaching client that very toxic individual, but every time you kind of brought them back, they needed the guidance. They needed the help to get them back and go, yeah. oh, you know what? You're right. I'm defaulting back to the the you know, the old behaviors, the bad habits, and you know, the, the sky is not all, you know, always falling. You know, I can look at things a little differently. So sometimes if the relationship's important enough, then you're, you're going to have to do it more than once. You're going to have to be the good guide. You're going to have to be their Yoda to, you know, the situation and provide them a little bit of gentle guidance, you know, and, and uh, direct them the way that they need to be looking at things. Um, but again, I think that comes down to really uh, you understanding and appreciating kind of who it is and what environment situation you find yourself in. And like you always say, you know, you have a choice and you know, you, that choice is, is one that you may be forced upon to make sooner rather than later to save your own sanity. And I know we spoke about mink holes in a previous episode. I remember working with this vice president who was a pretty decent guy, <clears throat> but he had a temper. And one day his uh, executive assistant came in and I knew that she was rubbing him the wrong way. And, and that happened often. And this was like the straw that broke the camel's back. And he just let loose. I've never seen anything like that. She ran out of his office crying. And in those days I was with my clients through their day. So I yeah. witnessed this happening and I looked at him and I said, was it your intention to be a jerk? And he looked at me, he says, what's with the non-judgmental? I thought coaches are supposed to be non-judgmental. You're <laughs> calling me a jerk. I said, I'm not calling you a jerk. What I was asking, were you intending to be a jerk? If you, if so, you were successful. successful. <laughs> and if not, then you just blew it. So, mm. you know, what, what was the driving force behind that? And he just burst out laughing. He said, I didn't think you'd have an answer for that question. Like, <laughs> I thought coaches were supposed to be non-judgmental. I wanted to know, was that his intention? That's a whole different way forward. If I'm working with somebody who intends to be a jerk yeah. and he really, I mean, the language he used, the tone of voice, the anger, the, the, the volume of, you know, the screaming, it was mm -hmm. really quite something. So I said, so what's your choice now? He says, I have to dig myself out and I'm deep. I'm deep. Yeah. 
And there you go. So he, his intention was not to do that. It just was the straw that broke the camel's back. And this has happened many times. I've seen uh, staffers bring their bosses into um, like a logic complaint so that they, like HR had to get involved mm -hmm. and legal um, and the director could have lost his job because his secretary, literally the, the first level in, in the organization lodged a complaint about his attitude and his temper and everything else. And I had to get to the bottom of that to see, was he going to lose his job? His, 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 cause his job was everything to him. He had, um, what's the name of that condition where you slowly but surely lose your eyesight? Oh, macular degeneration. There, it, it's something else. It's it's and it can affect your hearing as well. Oh yeah, I that I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, you know, for our audience, if you know what I'm talking about, slowly but surely your peripheral vision uh, goes, and then you become blind. And he was blind, and he was starting to lose his hearing as well. So he had to memorize an incredible mm. amount of data, and she was his eyes and soon to be ears for him. When she would talk to him, she would turn away. She was doing his, her nails because he couldn't see. So she wasn't talking towards him. She was talking away from him more and more and more as she was looking off and doing something else. And he was getting more and more frustrated because he couldn't hear her, never mind see, and he would just blow. So I was able to solve that issue within five minutes in observing what was going on, turning the desk around, how she faced him, no more doing your nails while you're working with the boss that's you know not on company time and um it, it totally um resolved the conflict but that's not life you don't yeah. know what the driving force is and sometimes people are toxic to you i would say in families that's probably the most difficult toxic uh, relationship that you can have because you can't get away from it as easily as workplace at least you know at the end of the day you go home and you could leave that garbage on yeah. the side Yeah. When, when it's family issues and it comes back again and again and again, if you don't deal with it, you don't say, I will not accept this. I will not be responsible for all that you're miserable about in life and, you know, wish you well, but I'm not a target, yeah. you know, it's not going to be happening. That's the only time that you could, you know, actually in many ways, turn them around so they might even have a higher level of respect for you for saying no to them. It yeah. might take time, but it, it just might help them see you as not a dish rag or somebody that they can man manipulate or trot all over. Yeah. Not going to work. So I, I'm going to ask you, what are you dealing with that is a toxic relationship? How have you, if at all, dealt with it? And if you think you could stay silent and, you know, I'll just ignore it and go away. It will not go <laughs> away won't. because you're going to own your response to it and you're going to beat yourself up for not saying anything. Yeah. So that's, you're going to carry that baggage with you forever if you don't get rid of it now. Yeah. No, that's a great point. And it's a great, uh, great question for our audience to consider. And we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this particular topic in this episode. And, you know, share what you feel comfortable with or reach out to Donna or myself directly. And, you know, we'd love to engage in a conversation. If you're dealing with this now and you're really unsure of how to how to move forward in a toxic environment with a toxic person, you know, that's an opportunity for us to, you know, bridge this conversation or maybe share some stories in terms of how you've overcome some of these situations and some of the strategies and advice you might give other people that are maybe dealing with it. And, uh, We'd love to hear from you. So Donna, how can people contribute in that regard or reach out to us? The best way is through our Facebook group, Inquiring Minds with Donna Carlin and Steve Harper. Uh, sign up so you get notified when uh, a new episode is uh, posted there and all our episodes are there. You could go back to the first episode and, and listen to it again. Or like for the Tung first Fu. time. <laughs> like to Tung Fu. There you go. Um, and you know, tell us what you're, what you're dealing with and we could have a discussion because if you post it there, some of the other listeners could weigh in as well and you could get the wisdom of other listeners as, as well. Yeah. So that's really good. You could get us on our websites, ripplecentral.com for the King of Rippler it's, and <laughs> Mr. Harper. I'm at Donna Carlin with a K.com and, uh, you could find out more about our work there. 
uh, but join the conversation. We would love to hear from you. Absolutely. Well, another great topic. This one, uh, you know, really is a, a fascinating one because I think almost every one of our uh, audience members probably deals with this on some level. So this will be really interesting to see what kind of response we get. So uh, we'll be back again with another episode of Inquiring Minds very soon. But until then, Donna, take care. You too. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.